left-wing celebrities get destroyed for coming up with conspiracy theories and people start to boycott products from China. Hello everybody and welcome to today's episode of Maya's Life. Well, we have great news. It's not raining today. It's a great sunny day in Hyde Park. We're back in the park again uh, and then we're gonna do the show from here. So this is my favorite spot in Hyde Park. If you know where this place is, you can usually find me <laughs> hanging around here. But let's talk about Emma Kennedy. Yeah, so Emma Kennedy is a left-wing celebrity. She's an author. She's uh, also a celebrity MasterChef champion. And uh, so she's gone on this rant against Boris Johnson uh, when uh, Boris's baby was born. And it got slightly ridiculous. So on the day when uh, Boris's baby was born, uh, she said that, well, he's not coming to Parliament for Prime Minister's questions. He's either terrified of Keir Starmer or doesn't want to do it on TV with no backbenchers around him or different reasons. And uh, obviously we found out that, you know, he couldn't make it because his baby was being born. And uh, Dan Wooten from uh, Talk Radio uh, did this monologue against her. And we're going to show you the clip in a minute. Uh, but then she actually said, I have made an urgent complaint to your station. And you should be aware that republishing this is also an act of defamation. Please delete and issue an apology. And then Dan Wooten tweeted back, no. <laughs> He also said, go ahead, my words are entirely factual and made in context. You can read them in full here. And then she said, thanks, I'll be adding that to the complaint. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand where the defamation or any lie it comes into this because Dan basically just uh, read her tweet and responded to it. And uh, so there was no issue with anyone when it comes to libel or slander or anything like that. And so actually let's watch the clip of uh, him uh, on talk radio talking about this deranged Boris hater Emma Kennedy wrote of five possible reasons he was missing PMQs and asked for her Twitter users to speculate. The reasons included that he was terrified of Keir Starmer, doesn't want to do it without backbenchers chairing him and wants to make the public think COVID response has nothing to do with him. Well, we all know now that all of that speculation was complete and utter rubbish, complete and utter tosh. Boris couldn't prepare, prepare for PMQs because he was preparing for something much more significant, the arrival of his baby boy. But even that news didn't stop Boris's nasty and extreme critics. Alistair Campbell tweeted, and Alistair Campbell will be here shortly, actually, but he tweeted, a newborn baby may be a better excuse than most for missing PMQs, though he should still be doing it. I suspect we are going to see an awful lot of excuses in the future. An excuse? Are you kidding me, Mr. Campbell? What sexist claptrap? Imagine suggesting a woman should give birth and be back at work within hours. Now, the beauty of this whole situation is that people like Emma Kennedy and others uh, find various ways to attack uh, not just Boris Johnson, we're just talking about Boris as an example here, but these are the same people who attack ordinary people back in 2016 after the referendum uh, with Brexit. They called Brexit voters stupid. And uh, <laughs> because, you know, they are so morally right that no one else can be right. Uh, so um, she decided to obviously file a complaint and uh, t t take legal action. And then two minutes later, she changed her mind. Uh, the update we have from Guido Fawkes is that in various tweets last night, Emma Kennedy said that she had consulted libel lawyers, Carter Rock and Drumroll. She said, I'm not pursuing it because Dan Wooten doesn't deserve the three P spent on him. And I don't need to spend three grand on a letter telling him that he's a misleading, malicious, well, we can't say that word. Uh, he can have that for free. When I was a lawyer, I, I used to advise people never to sue unless they were prepared to think about the person they were suing every day for 18 months. Readers, is not effing worth it. Or maybe it's because she knew that she was never going to win. <laughs> so she basically backed down. Uh, yeah, this is a ridiculous thing where you have, again, people like Alistair Campbell. If you watched the... Uh, the video we did earlier earlier um, today about uh, Bill Gates and China. Uh, we also talked about Alistair Campbell in that and uh, the BBC and everything. Uh, so these people, <laughs> they are so out of touch with uh, uh, real life and ordinary people that um, they don't actually know what they're talking about most of the time. Uh, they just bluff their way through life. I, I know earlier I said uh, today's a great day and it's not raining. But uh, the sun's disappeared again. It's kind of getting chilly. So I'm glad that I'm actually wearing this coat. So if anyone in the comment section was criticizing me for wearing a coat today, it's because it's a bit chilly. But in other news, uh, we had yesterday Boris Johnson doing his first daily press conference again. 
and uh, he confirmed that we have passed the peak and he's going to announce the plans to ease the lockdown slowly towards the end of this week. So it's either today or tomorrow at some point, maybe Sunday. Uh, and I think one of the things that we should do really is, uh, uh, I can't um, see why, if we are having supermarkets open, why we can't have other certain shops like clothing shops open and still do social distancing and one in one out, that sort of stuff. Uh, so we should be able to bring back the economy uh, and a lot of shops could easily open uh, whilst they apply the social distancing measures anyway. We've come through the peak, or rather we've come under what could have been a vast peak, as though we've been going through some huge alpine tunnel. Now at the same time we have a situation where even during that press conference certain journalists and broadcasters uh, decided to play games. Robert Peston came up with stupid questions again and uh, at this point Usually it's the ministers or the prime minister who gets frustrated. Chris Whitty, <laughs> one of the medical experts, um, actually uh, got really impatient and decided to answer very directly and say, you know, you're just wrong. You made the important point that we've avoided the reasonable worst case of 500,000 deaths, but by your own chart, the death toll in the UK is possibly the worst in Europe, certainly amongst the worst in Europe. As we he head into the second phase, what lessons have you learned from that seemingly worrying outcome? When I, I come from a profession, as Patrick does, where learning the lessons after you've got, gone through something is absolutely critical. Totally accept the basic premise of your question, which is we must learn lessons at the right point. But what you don't do frankly, is do that in the middle of something. We are nowhere near the end of this epidemic. We are through, and it is very good, as the Prime Minister said, we're through the first phase of this. There is a very long way to run for every country in the world on this. And I think let's not go charging in to who's won and who's lost at this point. Let's actually try and take it quite, you know, quite carefully learning lessons from one another as we go along. You know, I really feel for the, the medical experts, the scientific advisors of the government who have to deal with these uh, so-called journalists on a daily basis. It's kind of embarrassing. But in other news, uh, we have the latest opinion polls showing that uh, there are a lot of people who have now started to and want to boycott uh, the products that come from China because of the way the Chinese government have been dealing with this. We have the, the latest the opinion poll from uh, that Talk Radio actually uh, published saying 35% say that they would be unwilling to purchase goods made in China. Oh, by the way, I know we were talking about shops being closed, uh, although M&S have started to actually uh, open their shops now, the actual uh, real shop, not just the food, M&S food. So we've got the uh, Oxford Street M&S being open. So if you want to buy some clothes, you could come here. <laughs> now, going back to the whole boycotting China uh, stuff, uh, my only worry is that because we've gone for decades and decades, being so dependent on Chinese products. Most of the things that we buy, even if it's got a Western uh, label or brand, still comes from China. And uh, if, if this is gonna be happening, we have to go back to uh, being more independent and actually uh, empower our own manufacturing uh, in, in the West, in, in the UK or in America, uh, so that we actually make goods here um, and actually, in, or, or in Western Europe, just buy it from each other rather than China. Now, in other happy news, <laughs> Meghan Markle has lost her first high court battle against the Mail on Sunday. As you know, that she decided to sue the Mail on Sunday because they were mean to her. And then, obviously, the court decided that, no, it's just freedom of press. They can say whatever they want. They didn't do anything wrong. Uh, so, yeah, the little spoiled girl from the US uh, has now lost her first battle. I, I don't think she's going to give up anytime soon though. But this takes us back to what we were talking about, the, about the celebrity culture, the, the self-centered, virtue-signaling, pompous, spoiled culture uh, that they think they're better than everybody else. Ricky Gervais said something really interesting about them. So Ricky Gervais said, I think that people are just a bit tired of being lectured to. Now celebrities think, the general public needs to see my face. They can't get to the cinema. I need to do something. And it's when you look into their eyes, you know that even if they're doing something good, they're sort of thinking, I could weep at what a good person I am. Well, he's absolutely right. Uh, but we are, we are still getting sick and tired of these people. And uh, it, whether it's just the celebrities or the, the mainstream media who are basically playing their whole personality games and you know, they, are, they think they're celebrities too. Uh, this is why, on that note, we should listen to Her Majesty the Queen. 
uh, he said that stay home and watch Maya 2C. And yeah, that's a true story, by the way. Now, before a lot of people, I know some people are gonna say, you can't say that, that's treasonous. The truth is, in my defense, I don't care. <laughs> it's a joke, <laughs> get used to it. Uh, but yeah, genuinely, watch Maya. Um, you need to subscribe and click on that bell next to it so you get notified. Uh, we do have the daily news show at 5.45 p.m. and the daily vlogs at 8 p.m.